We ready? Yeah, we're chilling. Chilling. Just let it roll in. Just talk. Yo, um, before we start this interview, I'm going to just say one thing, man. I've only met this guy, Ryan, like five or six times, <laughs> but he's my fucking guy. <laughs> I trust him with my dude. life. Really? I trust you with my life, bro. bro. You're that fucking guy. This dude right here, literally, every time I call him, the first ring, boom. Viso's gonna be mad at ring. me because I don't I don't answer Viso's calls sometimes. <laughs> but when he that's calls all right. me, I answer. Every time this guy, one ring. That's, that's crazy. I appreciate you guys. You already, man. All right, bro. So let's uh, let's get into it. Just off of that statement alone, I, I'm like inspired by you, which is super cool. Um, what is your backstory like before any of the creative stuff? Before any of the creative stuff? Or were you always a creative? No, I mean, I guess there's a backstory to it. Like, um, I started skateboarding, I guess. That's really like the start of it all. Like in second grade, I guess I picked up a skateboard and um, after that, like, just started skating. You know, that, that became my passion. That was like my first passion. Um, Shit, and then after that, you know, that's where the music came in, you know, music inspiration. Mm -hmm. I remember hanging out with my cousins and uncles, Eman, Kevin, Tommy. And like, um, yeah, like that's, they, they inspired my creative, you know, they started getting me into all the new music. Um, what year is this? Like how, how old are you at this point? I can't really say, like, let's just say second grade, I picked up a skateboard. Yeah. Fast forward to fifth grade, you know, now we're, me and my cousins, we're, we're experimenting with shit, you know, and yeah. then um, sixth grade, you know, like odd future vibes all through middle school. We're still skating all the time. Yeah. We're skating every day, scootering, being little fuck boys, fucking around, getting in trouble. And um, yeah, like that's really what fueled who I am as a person, you know, gotcha. as a whole. Like those, those are your roots. Yeah, like that's yeah. the root. Like basically skateboarding got you that into, whole culture. Yeah, it got you into music, which got you into fashion being a, a fashion and, guy, got you into being uh, someone that produces streetwear all the time. Exactly. It's, it's really, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, so like, what were you like listening to when you were skating? Like, what was your vibe there? Probably like a lot of like, Earl Sweatshirt, Odd Fe all that Odd Future shit, like, that was my favorite. But that, I've always is that been, like your first memory of like music? That's like what I could say, you know, like, and even now till this day, like Tyler the Creator, like that dude is a genius, you know, and I, he's a huge inspiration till this day. He still never fails to inspire, like as time goes. But yeah, like that's the earliest memory I could think of, the earliest real uh, influence on my life. Gotcha. Our future. Gotcha. So when do you start Kinky? Kinky, that was already, that was uh, like 20, by 2017, you know, 2016 Kinky Vibes started and then, and then 2017 is when the brand uh, really came to life. But, uh, you know, a lot happened in between that. A lot happened in between that, you know, to get to, to the Kinky. Um, so what happened in between that? Give me, give me a quick rundown of so, it. So, so we're at middle school, you know, like same thing. Take me on the timeline. Skating all the time, middle school, boom, 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 boom. Then eighth, by the end of eighth grade, I started smoking weed probably. And then freshman year, so freshman year in high school, start selling it and stuff. And somewhere along the lines there, I got lost in the sauce. By sophomore year, probably not barely skating anymore not doing anything creative aside from at some point I made like t-shirts for the pep rally. Mm -hmm. I've always been like an entrepreneur. Like, yeah, 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 I even sold like my mom would buy me chocolates from yeah. BJ's and I would sell chocolates and Skittles and shit for a dollar in school. And I also, so yeah, I made the t-shirts for the pep rally. Like that's the only thing I really did in high school. And aside from that, I got lost in the sauce, got lost in the sauce. Got in trouble a lot, and 
you know, graduated high school, went to college for one semester. Yeah. Dropped out of college. And after that, you know, like, you know, you start thinking, like, what are you going to do? You know, what, what am I going to do with my life? I went to college basically to, you know, try to prove something yeah. to my parents and the people around me. And, you know, that's basically what you're supposed to do is go to college. So went to college. What year is that? What year is college? That's like 2015. Like, you know, I went for that, for that semester okay. by the beginning of 2016. That semester was done or something. Yep. And then I didn't go back. Yeah. You know, 2016, I believe, so yeah, like I, I so at one point, let's put it this way. At one point yeah. I tried to join the army, Okay. right? What year is at that? At one point in 2016, okay. um, beginning of 2016, about February, I tried to join the army. Cause at that point I, you know, I'm like, what am I gonna do with my life? Like, you know, I don't know, I don't, what am I gonna do with my life? You know, I got so lost in the sauce, I, I didn't, I had yeah. no idea. Now you're, the college thing, you're like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. No, actually I didn't drop out of college, I flunked out of college. They said I had to take a academic a, a break or something. Like I could go back after a certain amount of time, but I had to skip a semester, I just failed. I, wow. You know. And, and from that, you go now, you're like, okay, I want to join the army maybe. What happens there? You know, and, and really that was like a grasp that like in my, eye, in my eyes at that time, that was the only thing I could do yeah. to become somewhat successful. Like, oh, that's like, that's the, oh, you just go to the army, you know, you're going to be good. That, that was my thought process. But I didn't get into the army. Okay. Um, they denied me. Now I'm big on everything happens for a reason. I'm super big because I made it like, I, like going back to high school, I made a lot of mistakes, right? I thought those mistakes defined me um, in a bad way, but really they did define me. They helped me because, because of one of the charges I got in high school, I just was not, I could not be in the army. I'm not gonna go into too much detail because that's a whole other story in itself, but long story short, I could not join the army because, because of because of my past mistakes, basically. Got it. I could have appealed it, but they actually said it was unlikely that I could join, yeah. period. Yeah, yeah. Which is crazy. It's really hard to not get, be able to get in, into the Army. Did that discourage you at all, yes. or did that? That was the worst p time of my life. That was probably, like, my bottom. At that point, I'm like, oh, shit, like, I'm fucked. Like, I don't, I'm not going to be anything in life. I got into, like, a downward spiral after that. That whole 2016 year horrible like got arrested a few times horrible 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 mm -hmm. um what is the turning point the turning point was you know it was pretty quick you know i don't stay in a downward spiral for long but at some point i did realize i have to get arrested three times whatever all for weed so nothing crazy but i was just like yo i gotta make a change you know just I gotta make a change, you know. I so, so I started skateboarding again, um, hanging out with the same friends I would hang out with in middle school, right? Mm -hmm. Shout out to like Nico and Ryan. I started hanging out with them again, skateboarding again all the time. Stopped hanging out with the old people I was hanging out with. Nothing against them. Shout out to them. Those, you know, everybody a part of my life. Shout out to them. But um, you know, it was just. Yeah, different different sense of community, exactly. the skate community. So it, it's something that people always comment on. The skate community is such like a family. Exactly. It's people wanting to see better and growth. Like you're there, you know, on the five step or you're there at the skate park and everybody is there to like get a trick done that yep, day. Yep, or yep. get a line done. It's beautiful. And it's a beautiful It's beautiful. Scene. Everybody cheers each other on I to love it. get better and in some certain skate parks more than others yeah. like it's so much of, of a community out there 100 percent. and like so yeah i got back to my roots like what we were talking about in the beginning i got back to that and like that helped me get out of that trap out of that hole of negativity and bullshit started skateboarding all the time really and you you don't need much money when you're skateboarding every day you just need five six bucks to go buy pizza mm -hmm. and a fucking coke and you're good yeah you're vibe. <laughs> it's really a vibe when you think about it you're not 
you, like you said, you're really not spending more than ten dollars when you're really into it. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. where you're just in the parks, you're you don't just need, at you the don't stairs. Need much. You get a bagel, two bucks. Simple. <laughs> you're you know? right. So that, so yeah, so the skateboarding got back into the music again. Now, like now, I'm like actually trying to make music. I'm in Kevin's room. Yep. Kevin's room, just making music with his with his um. He had his like drum pad basically, like the, stuff, the MIDI yeah. keyboard. Exactly. He yeah. had some stuff, and I was making music now, skateboarding, making music, make editing little videos of my skateboarding as content, um, and that you know was the start of it. And you know, throughout 2016, kinky was the vibe, and we were all talking about kinky. Everything is kinky, and I realized like um, this would be a really cool brand to start. Um, it really makes sense. Mm -hmm. It means a lot, like, you know, and I started the brand. Everybody loved it. And from there, really, like, um, I had to choose between making music and making the clothes because at one point, like, I couldn't sustain um, going to the studio all the time. Yeah. And also doing all the production on and the kinky stuff. And doing kinky in the city. Events. I wasn't doing the production yet. Like, I was just, you know, getting it made and stuff. Oh, okay. But I'm working at T-Mobile. I'm doing the contracting job one or two days a week. I'm making my, doing the kinky brand, you know, selling out hoodies. And on top of that, um... Can I take, can I take it back just one quick step? Just go ahead, so go ahead, I, yeah. I could learn more. So, the, you get back into the skate vibe the skate community mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where does that contracting job come from also the t-mobile job like oh so it, the like, t-mobile where, where did that happen so the t-mobile job started in by like february of 2017 at one point i just printed out 20 resumes and i went to like 15 different places yeah. handing them out um at that time i had three people that were ready to start me right away and I actually was able to choose um, some higher paying than others. Wow. T-Mobile was the middle, middle, middle pay. I went with T-Mobile because they had a commission and I just, you know, I, I enjoy uh, selling and doing stuff like that better than ShopRite. ShopRite was paying more somehow. I don't want to work at ShopRite. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, no disrespect to Shoprite. My grandma no worked there for forty years. Okay. No disrespect. No disrespect to Shoprite. No, it's you just know, for you. For me, hundred you know. percent. Um, so I went with T-Mobile. Cool. You know, and uh, and what is the contracting job? The contractor job, probably that really honestly, bro. I always did contractor jobs like throughout the whole this whole time period. I've had like we're talking about twelve jobs. I've always worked. Gotcha. You know, aside from hustling and trapping and all that. Cool. Bullshit. I've always had a job. Um, I freaking have, I've hung up smart boards in schools. I've done projectors, TVs, mirrors. We fucking redone Adidas stores, Nike stores, all Everything. types of random, random things. I love that. Um, I love that. You okay, know, I'm very so, handy. I'm very, I'm yeah, very yeah. No, I, I definitely, I definitely see it. And also, jumping ahead just a little bit like obviously with the whole production uh the blank the blank workshop yeah like your your t-shirt production like that that's very that's so, that, hands-on that's very yeah. something that you have to learn and it's like in a way like that contracting type of exactly stuff. Like you're measuring twice cutting once type of feel. all that stuff yeah. exactly yeah. all right cool so you everybody's talking kinky everybody is that is, like, yeah, that's literally. by the end of 2017 now. Gotcha. By the end of 2017, Kinky has started. Everybody's talking about it. It was, you know, by, 28, the, by the beginning of 2018 is when I got everything official, got the yeah. LLC. Yeah, um, and credits to you, that's when I had also rediscovered you. Yeah. Like, in the most honest way. Like, I knew you when I was younger. Yeah. And when you were creative and when you were skateboarding days. and all that. In the middle of that, I've, I didn't even, I forgot that we were even talking online yep. and all that stuff. And then when you started Kinky Up, you were... Yeah, you were one of my, like, first supporters. You have some OG t-shirts. I have it 
I think I have it in my bag right now, actually, or it's in my car. It was in my camera bag yesterday, or my, uh, my backpack. And I was like, oh, crap, I had the orange one mm -hmm. that's kinky in the city. And I remember seeing that because I had saw Viso was posting it. I had saw that mm -hmm. you had people modeling for you. And I'm like, whoa, this is a different lane. Like, I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not in that. Yeah. I wasn't in that yet, and but I had rediscovered no, but your like stuff Anthony Papaters. But that stuff like, was dope that you have because we, me and you went back that day with E-Man. Those old videos that nobody's talking about right now that, that you guys did, like, dude, that, that was so ahead of its time, you know? Yeah, no, it's like, it's just, it's like different. It's all different uh, timings, but like I remember seeing just everybody, like this bigger community that we're all creating now mm -hmm. like that 2016 to 2018 time mm -hmm. of like that build yeah, yeah. process I really it, it was, was like, a build process i feel like a lot of people did it together though you know yeah. like you know you me viso there's so many people I'm not gonna name them all right now viso's yeah. back there though so <laughs> i'll name him of but, course of course but um there's so many of us that like kind of did it together uh, in our own lanes yes but we did it together and we all kind of inspired each other you know and it's it's a beautiful thing that's why yeah, i think dude. that's why we do what we do at the end of the day like we feed off each other yeah and so yeah so i want to get back to the timeline because i'm still right, curious right. about okay. like i want to hyper focus on your go ahead. story because i did not know anything so far that you are saying yeah literally no, besides I, I, the eighth grade stuff i told you i'm gonna kinky. i'm gonna tell you and i love it Got i it. love it i love your story so far this is awesome um so 2018 kinky's now like the real deal you got the llc mm -hmm. you got you, stuff in production you're selling stuff like crazy yep take me to that moment in time and beyond that so um you know 2018 everything got official um, you know, just selling hoodies, making hoodies at some point. Um, you know, I was very close to the, to my guy who did the embroidery on the hoodies, my boy Smith, 15 needles. Um, he would make my hoodies all the time. Um, but he's a very busy guy and stuff. And, um, at, w at some point I started using his machine. He let, he allowed me to use his machine. It was great. I, that's how I really learned more into this production stuff. He yeah. really kind of taught me a lot of the things I know today. Um, and, you know, I took it and I ran with it. You know, I, you know, I fucking, you know, I, I, my work ethic, I applied everything to it. Yeah. And at one point, you know, obviously I wanted to get my own, my own embroidery machine. Um, but let me not fast forward too much. Yeah, yeah. Let me go back. Yeah, bring me in the moment. So 2018, I, by the end of 2018, you know, I start helping him out with production. Um, and 2019 comes, you know, things kind of start slowing down a bit. And You're saying for kinky? Yeah, for things kinky. Things start slowing, start down, slowing down, a down a bit. Okay. And not super slow, but like, you know, not as it was in the beginning. Gotcha. So I'm working on my website. I'm working on a bunch of stuff, you know, and um, everything um, at that point, I'm making it myself with my guy Smith. And um, this is 2019. It's 2019. I see, because you have a long story. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. see you're like, I'm, we, I'm like we talked about the I'm other like, day. Yeah. When you have all of these points, some moments are very hard to really tap into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They and are. that's totally fine. Yeah, yeah. But we're going to tap into it no, right no, here. No, no, we got it. We got we're it. Gonna tap into You're it right doing here. good. You're doing good. I'm, I'm wanting you to get lost right there because mm -hmm. we talked about this the other day. And I feel the same way about certain periods. Yeah. So 2019, you're with Smith. You're doing the production now. What is the moment, the most monumental moment where you boom, you're like, I got to get my own machine. I got to get my own spot. I got to bring my own team onto it. What's that moment? <laughs> okay. I mean, so honestly, I realized, like, I think I'm big on ownership, you know, and um, I just realized for me, my route was owning what I wanted to do. So um, I, went to, I was going to the studio during that time. 
um, up until 2018 mm -hmm. is when I stopped making the music because music, you don't, I couldn't make that return fast enough to sustain what I wanted to do. Yeah. But I still wanted to want to make music, right? Um, but I s went towards focusing more on my kinky brand, right? I started investing more into it. Cool, now I have more stock. Um, I just bought mad hoodies. I know I'm making them myself with Smith, mm -hmm. so I'm like, all right, boom, I bought mad hoodies. I make them. You're taking advantage of the opportunity. Exactly. Given. And, um, you know, and my slogan is kinky everywhere, so, you know, I'm always thinking about kinky. I want kinky. I want everybody to wear that stuff. Um, that's really the drive through this all. It's what saved me from that bad hole I was in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in 2016. So, um, 2019, boom. I, so like I said, a big, yeah, big, on owner, big on ownership. And I just wanted to do my own thing, have mad product. By 2020, January, I said, I need my own space. I'm filling up my parents' basement. I need my own uh, office space. So I found one nearby. And um, I found one nearby, rented it out. Everyone at the time told me, no, you can save your money. You don't need it. But when you need more space and when you know it in your head that you need more space, it's already a block. If you don't get more, if you don't get more space, you're not allowing more things to come in. Yeah, you're not you allowing more you know. stuff to fill it. Exactly. Like, you know, if I got more space, I'm going to fill it with more things that are exactly. going to make me more money, exactly. that are going to bring in more production. Exactly. That's going to allow me freedom to get back to music and skateboarding. Exactly, exactly. So. Well, what is the first space? Is it this spot you're at right no, now? No, it's in Dumont. So okay. that was the first, first space. And I was there from January up until February of 2021. You know, so I had that first space. In that first space, I had went from a smaller room to a bigger room that they had, about double the size, um, within that, within like four months. So by, by the time March came where COVID hit. Yeah. So yeah, for three months, January, I got into the smaller space and then they had a bigger space open up and in the same building. I took the bigger space. And that was in March when they first started, when COVID first started. Um, you know, and at that point I had the heat press and I, 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 my whole purpose was to produce Kinky and then the Blank Workshop kind of came out of that yeah. because now I have these skills and I could help people do what I've, I've, I've been trying to do. Um, and yeah, that's where the, that's now, now we're at the Blank Workshop stage where I freaking just, you know, I haven't been super, I haven't been on top of kinky like mm -hmm. I should be. I've but been that's more, all right. Which is fine because, you know, it's all, a, everything happens everything for a happens. reason and we're all, we're doing it how it's supposed to be done at the end of the day. So the blank workshop, we're here, boom. So Dumont's the first spot. Dumont's the first that, spot. And that, at that point. That grows your interest in the blank workshop. Into the blank workshop. Lifestyle. And then you start helping more people. Exactly. Where is the turning point where it goes to a next studio and what is that next studio so so the turning point actually was when i wanted to get my own embroidery machine so that was in i was i've been talking about this from for a while yeah you know? <laughs> and at this point this is the time now where i needed that embroidery machine but i couldn't get it into my actual space because it was a, on a third floor and there was no elevator there so I couldn't, I couldn't get the embroidery machine there. With, so that was setting me back. Then I, um, it's funny, there's so, many, so much shit because then I moved into my guy Jack's garage. Um, he, he runs jeffersons.co and I actually worked for him too. Like this is something I haven't even said yet, mm. but I worked with Jeffersons and I did a, almost all of their tie dye socks, all that stuff. I was running production with him. That's another guy who got me more into the production of things because I was running it for him. Um, I was doing all his tie dyes. He had his a DTG, I was running wow. his heat press. Um, you know, and that was before I even got the office too. I was running with him. So, so yeah, all of that, all of that stuff, all of that production knowledge got to, the, yeah. got to that spot, started applying it, try to apply it more towards kinky. 
but then people saw what I was doing and everybody was like, yo, I need your help, I need your help. And shit, I just realized like, wow, like I could really use these skills and I could help these people and I could make a living out of it. And um, by, by the middle of COVID, I had quit the job already. No more T-Mobile. Started saying no more to the contracting job because yeah, you now, didn't have time. Now, you had now I'm doing, you were focused yeah, on something else. Exactly, and um, shit. Since the middle of COVID, I've been like basically working for myself, just upgrading shit. February, I got that embroidery machine. Finally, I moved into Jack's garage, and that's the Colinelli, Colinelli no, Bros. No, no, no. Built. No, oh, this Jack's garage was just the embroidery okay. machine. Small okay, space. Okay. February up until August, by because it was such a small space. It was smaller than my last space. Gotcha. I had to downgrade to get this embroidery machine. Wow. Um, downgrade my space, you know? And um, and what, what town is that in? It's in Fort Lee. Fort Lee, yeah. oh, okay. So okay. at that point, I knew I had to get out of there because I'm freaking expanding so fast and shit, like, I'm like, yo, I gotta, I gotta get a bigger space, you know? I got together with my uncle E man, and he's 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 a year younger than me, but he's my uncle. I just gotta let the people know. Oh, I always forget that. He's a year younger than me, but he's my uncle. And Kevin's a year older than me. He's also my uncle. But yeah, anyways. Wow. Yeah, I just gotta let the world know. But um. <laughs> I always forget that, and like now that I'm thinking back, I remember, like hearing that yeah. and saying, "Oh, okay." But my best friend TJ has like a similar situation yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, "Oh, that's." That's so cool. But um, got together with him and, you know, we, I was looking for a while, a while. Even when I was trying to find the embroidery machine, I couldn't find a, a space that was, um, that was gonna like, um, that was gonna allow the embroidery machine to get in. I couldn't find an affordable space at that time. But as time went on, my budget increased. And then E-Man came in with me and we, we made the investment in the space together rented out one of the rooms to my guy, my guy uh, with Dynamite Buds. And now we've just been there since last August. We've been wow. there running the blank workshop, you know, and now I got a team. I got, you know, my guy, on the, my guy Chris on the embroidery, my guy Alex on, um, on um, screen printing. And then I got, you know, some graphic designers that I could call anytime, yeah. and it's a beautiful thing. Now yeah, you really built running. up a really good network and a really good team. Exactly, and it's super fun in there. You know, it's we're always having fun and we're always just listening to music, working, chatting. It's I'm trying to build an environment, you know, yeah. for everybody, including it, myself. Main, obviously, mainly myself, but like it's it's just such a beautiful thing to see. Others other thrive other, in exactly, there. and I have. You know, these young guys, they come to my shop, they use my sewing machines. My boy Rob, he's using my sewing machine. He's freaking sewing up dope ass stuff. Like, freaking made me a bucket hat. He made a, That's... got my boy Yogi Life. He made a whole tapestry hoodie. Um, dude, it's, it's so, so much young talent out there and I wanna be able to see it all. It inspires me. You inspire me, Viso inspires me. Yeah. Every, you know, it's, I love to see it. Yeah, so is this like kind of, uh, what's the one-year anniversary date for the Blank Workshop in the location you're at right now? You it said last August, August, right? In August, August yeah. what, you remember? August 15th. Oh, yeah, it's about to be soon. It's like in three days. It doesn't even feel like it, dude. <laughs> this year has just flown by. Yo, that's crazy. That but, is crazy. Yeah. Wow. When did we reconnect? I'm trying to think, like, like officially. Was it when Viso and I had gone to... Um, gone to your studio, or did we? Yeah, yeah. We hang out one time before that. I, I, so I think like we would like say stuff to each other on Instagram here and there, but we reconnected that time you pulled up to the studio, you yes. know, with E-Man. Yeah. And we saw each other, and I think my stomach hurt, but I did it. <laughs> but like your energy was like. It was when Your you were going to. Took away my were you going ache. to the Dominican Republic? Yes, I think I was about to go. You were about to vacation. go on the plane. And you're like, yo, I gotta leave, but I don't want to leave. I everywhere. didn't want to leave. I wanted to stay and keep talking to you because I was like, yo, this fucking guy is doing it right now, man. Yeah, because that was the first time we ever met. Like, like 
like for like real, for real. Officially met. We've known each other. We freaking beefed on Insta on on Facebook yep. when we were in middle for school. For years. Fucking Anthony Papaters. I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like in the video, like, yo, Anthony Papaters, you ain't got nothing on me. Yep, bro, dude, hilarious. Yo, that's so crazy though, cause you, we always talk about it, and we're super open about like how much people inspire us throughout the community. Mm -hmm. And I remember like leaving there and being so hyped up. Yeah, bro, honestly. Like, I was like, let's go. Straight you up. know what I mean? Like new connection to like, just boom, be on fire with and want to grow Dude. together and grow the operation. I love And it. think about the next move. And th and it's like, it was we're so, like all these like it little- It was so amping. Like, we're like little like Rob Deerdeck like minions Dude, like running I went around to the, like- I went to the Dominican Republic and I fucking enjoyed the fuck out of it. Shit was so amazing. That is awesome. That is awesome. I literally haven't looked at this sheet of like questions one time, really. Like you're just taking me through the timeline and like explaining it exactly how. Yeah. You're bringing me to the moments in time, which yeah, is I mean, I, yeah. so cool. I want to be able to look back on this one day. This is my first real interview with somebody. Yeah. So I want to make it meaningful. And you're it my is. guy. So. It is. It is. This is fire. Um, I'm trying to think of like a, a question that you haven't answered, Visa. I can't think of one. I really, like, I really am looking at it. I'm like, you got it. You got it all. But I want to like think of something on the spot. Think of something on the spot, man. I'm waiting on it. What is your favorite moment of the first time you listened and were skating to now? What has been your favorite moment in that like where you really dove into that creative side? My favorite moment. I mean, bro, I, that's a hard ass question. We ask the hard questions here. Dude, I mean, I, that's, that's, that's a super hard question because like, it's every moment I make something new, every moment I see a print come to life, it's, that, that's every moment I make some new, a new product, every moment I, when I'm, the moment I made these fucking mesh shorts. <laughs> that, look at these mesh shorts. Yo, they match. They like, match come on, the, man. They match. You can just tie dye t t-shirt, man. Puff print. Wow. That, those are my favorite moments, you know, and, and I just love wow. seeing it when other people are doing it too, when I, when, and, I, and I'm making it for them. So when people come to me and then they actually execute and go for it with their brand, that's my favorite thing. And I always say this to everybody. I always try to think of what is like, let's just say the ugliest thing I've ever printed, right? And I can't pinpoint it. I can't even think of somebody who's came to me to make to bring their brands to life and it was whack yeah like i can't even think everybody who's came to me everything you see on my page it's pretty cool i like it yeah. i think it's cool yeah I, I agree i only wear my own brand but i can respect i i respect it you know like i i agree i haven't no. seen anybody out here who's fucking executing on their shit and their shit is whack i i, I fuck with everybody's shit <laughs> Like, for Be real. confident with it. You're confident. This guy right here, I got to get in front of the camera. This guy is for the people, for real, for real. Like, he's about his business. We're all about our business. But at the end of the day, he's helping everybody. And that's a blessing to have in the community. We got a lot of people doing that. And, like, I don't know. I feel like you're one of, like, the people that's, like, like I said, we're, like, these, like, Rob Deerdeck minions. Of, like, yeah, yeah. That's what we want to be about. Rob Deerdeck, that's another that guy right there, space. man. We want to be skating. We want to be, like, we want to have that freedom to get in that situation. Exactly. Of, like, we can Just make the decision and make the choices of what we want to do on every day. And you're starting it off already, which is amazing because you're get, able to create your schedule. And mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. Exactly. My man. guy. Good Nobody, shit. Man. This is just 1.0. This is 1.0. 1.0, man. Let's do it. Shit. <laughs> Any last words? No last words, man. That was it. We said it all. <laughs> Here, let's get the zoom into Visa. You ready to go? No, I'm going to go over there. Today. He's just been sitting there <laughs> like this the whole time <laughs> trying to hide from the camera. He's like, can I move now? <laughs> That was fire. Dude, your story is fucking awesome. 
Damn, I didn't know about like all that shit in high school. Probably missed so much shit too, bro. Yeah, no, but that's what I'm saying, like 1.0. Like this shit, like bro, 